Tom Hartman here on the news. You need to know this. Mitt Romney really knows how to travel abroad. In his first international trip as a candidate for president, Romney has so far managed to infer he'd be a better president because he's white, insult the entire city of London, and get in a public dust-up with the British Prime Minister. After suggesting London may not be prepared to handle the Olympics, Romney was swatted down by Prime Minister David Cameron, who argued that hosting the Olympics in the middle of nowhere, as Romney did in Salt Lake City, might be a bit easier than in one of the world's busiest cities. And London's Mayor Boris Johnson publicly mocked Romney on Thursday while speaking to a crowd of 60,000 people in Hyde Park. British press corps weighed in on the trip debacle, saying Romney is worse than Palin. Now on a second leg of his trip, Romney heads to Israel where he can do some real damage. In screwed news, major bank Capital One is having a bad week after it was the first bank to be hit by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau for defrauding consumers and ordered to pay $165 million to customers in refunds, Capital One was just hit with another fine. This, depart this time, the Department of Justice has ordered the bank to pay out $12 million to members of the military for denying them their legal rights under the Service Members Civil Relief Act to avoid foreclosures and high interest rates. According to the Department of Justice, as many as 4,000 troops were illegally foreclosed on by that bank. Back in the old days when corporations operated against the best interests of our nation and preyed on our military members, there was a simple solution, the death penalty. The corporate death penalty, essentially revoking the corporation's charter and thus dissolving the company, has a long history in America. It's time to bring it back. In the best of the rest of the news, a Greek exit from the Eurozone may not be a matter of if, but when. On Thursday, Citigroup's chief economist put the chances of a Greek exit at 90% and said it was most likely going to happen in 2013. Early assessment within Citigroup put a Greek exit at 50%, but as austerity has tightened the noose on Greece, forcing their economy into a death spiral, just as Spain is now in, then any hopes of a Eurozone recovery have been dashed. Just as we're seeing in the United Kingdom, which is in a deep double-dip recession, austerity kills economies. The lists of those who support Congresswoman Michelle Bachmann's McCarthy-esque witch hunt against the State Department is growing. Four other members of Congress have signed on to a letter with Bachmann calling for an investigation into the Muslim Brotherhood's infiltration of the State Department as reported by known Islamophobe and hate monger Frank Gaffney. Then Newt Gingrich chimed in, in support of Bachman, asking what those who are horrified by the witch hunt are trying to hide. And now House Majority Leader Eric Cantor has joined the fray, giving his support to Bachman this morning in an interview with CBS. When asked if he thought Bachman was out of line to throw baseless accusations at public servants like Huma, Cantor responded, I think that her concern was about the security of the country. Come on, that's a cop-out answer. State Department official Huma Abedin now needs extra security to deal with death threats after Bachman's accusations. Endangering American public servants with dangerous innuendo to advance an Islamophobic political agenda? That's not protecting the country. That's ripping it apart. Michelle Bachman should resign. The controversy over Chick-fil-A's hateful speech continues after it was revealed that the Kathy family, which owns the fast food chain, has given as much as $3 million to anti-gay groups like the Family Research Council. Both the cities of Chicago and Boston have publicly said Chick-fil-A is not welcome in their city limits. Also, the Jim Henson Company has pulled its Muppet toys from Chick-fil-A's kids' meals. But leave it up to Republican John Huckabee to rush to the defense of the bigoted restaurant chain. He's declared next Wednesday Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day for standing by godly values, which to Huckabee and other dinosaurs on the right means denying civil rights to millions of Americans. There are certainly legal issues that could be raised should either Boston or Chicago formally reject permits for Chick-fil-A, but that hasn't happened. What has happened is that hate and bigotry have been called out, and that's a pretty good story. And finally, voter fraud is virtually non-existent, happening less often than people dying when their TVs fall on top of them. But in those few cases where voter fraud actually occurs, it tends to be Republicans doing it. John Enright, a Republican candidate for supervisor in Pinal County, where Arizona, 
has dropped out of the race after accusations surfaced that his companion, whom he lived with until her death in 2007, has been voting from the grave for five years since she died. Enright claims he's dropping out of the race for other reasons and denies any role in illegally casting ballots on behalf of his former companion. This case is fascinating, but I'm more interested in hearing an explanation from Mitt Romney, who committed voter fraud back in 2010 when he voted for Scott Brown in Massachusetts and when he lived in California and didn't even own a home in Massachusetts. So either quarter billionaire Mitt Romney, who owned mansions in California and New Hampshire, was sleeping in his son's unfinished basement without his butler, maid, or chauffeur, all pretty unlikely, or he committed voter fraud and should face five years in jail and a $10,000 fine. So Mitt, which is it? And that's the way it is today, Friday, July 27th, 2012. I'm Tom Hartman on the news.